Okay, so we're going to do a quick video here. Everyone would like to know how to measure the resistance of, say, small oven broiler element, large oven broiler element, which is the same broiler element used in the 30-inch oven as well, a speed heat burner, a 6-inch infinite heat burner, and the 8-inch infinite heat burner. All the 8-inch burners are infinite heat. Uh, the only difference in this is the six inch a speed heat versus an infinite heat. So here's my multimeter. So if you uh, look here, it's got all the settings, right? So this one is ohms, this is resistance. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my meter to 200 ohms. Okay, these are my probes. You have a common or ground and your other probe here. So when I touch these together, what we're measuring is the resistance through the meter and through the wire. So this is completing a circuit. You can see there's very little resistance in a wire. So we're gonna leave it on resistance. Uh, I have a clamp on this because I'm doing it uh, with you know, one person here. Uh, normally there'll be another probe like this on this side. This just allows me to clamp to it and only have to hold one side. So this is a six inch speed heat burner. Inside there, I know it's very hard to see, uh, but there are two fast on spades. So we're going to put one side of our meter on there, and then we're going to touch the other side to the other side. And if you'll look at the display, it says 11.2 ohms. So that is the resistance through this burner. 11 ohms is about what the speed heat burner should run 11 ohms plus or minus a few is fine if it reads 30 something ohms that's not a speed heat burner even if someone told you it was that is an infinite infinite heat burner which should read about 36 ohms so about 11 ohms for speed heat 36 ohms for infinite heat and this is how you can tell if your stove has been worked on prior to you owning it Maybe someone replaced a speed heat burner with an infinite heat burner, but didn't replace a switch and you're having burner switch problems. First things first, rule out the element and you want to know what element this is. We know with that 11 ohm reading that this is a speed heat element and can only be used with a speed heat switch. Okay, moving on, this is a six inch infinite heat and it can only be used with a six inch infinite heat switch. So we'll measure the resistance. Same thing, we'll find our first spade and get our meter on there. Make a connection here. And we've got 36.7 ohms. So about 36 ohms is what you want the six inch infinite heat um, to measure. If you're getting weird measurements fluctuating on your screen, make sure your two meter probes aren't touching uh, each other or uh, make sure you have good contact here. You should measure a very good resistance. Okay, this is an 8-inch infinite heat. Maybe easier to see the, the terminals in this one. I don't know if you can kind of see them down there in the hole. Two little silver... Two little silver metal things. But anyway, they're there, so just connect one side. And it doesn't matter which side. You can connect to this side and measure on this side, or you can connect to the other side, this Measuring resistance does not matter. So we'll connect this, make contact with our other probe, and what have we got on our display? 20.7 ohms, which is about, 20 ohms is about what you want the eight inch infinite heat burner to read. Okay, so that's how to measure the resistance on the burner after you've removed it from the stove. If you don't want to remove it from the stove, you can drop the drip pan remove the fast-ons or the plug and very carefully you know trying to hit the hole you can get up there and you can actually measure the resistance of the burner while it sits in your stove using these two screws here it's just easier for me to take the burner out to where i can see what i'm doing but you can do either one uh, you just have to remove the wires before you start taking your resistance readings okay here's a small broiler it sits like this up in your oven these are the insulating blocks that stick up that you can see that the wires go on that we pointed out in other videos. These two points are where we're going to take our resistance reading, which is going to measure the resistance through this broiler element. Okay, so we're going to take our 
take our probe, put it on here, take our other probe, touch it to here, making good contact, get some of that grease off there, and we've got, let's get a little better contact here. There we go, 32 and some odd ohms. So that's about what we want our small oven broiler to measure. So we know the broiler element is good. If your broiler is not working, it may be a thermostat, it may be a broken wire here at one of the broiler elements, but the broiler is good and uh, we know that because it measures good resistance. So moving on to the 30 inch, broiler or the big oven 40 inch broiler they use the same broiler same same part they'll measure the same resistance as well we'll go ahead and put our probe on there and we're getting about 17.7 17.5 something like that you want it to be around 17 17 ohms is what this broiler element should measure so all these are good so if you're having a problem with your burners or your broilers you can rule out them by measuring the resistance of the elements and that'll at least tell you yes i do have a good element and it's something else within the flare that's that's wrong okay so here we have a 30 inch 1962 lower oven element this one pushes in and pulls out this oven element set is for a 40 inch. This happens to be from a 1966. It doesn't push and pull in. You have to remove the two screws, pull it out a bit, and then remove the two wires on the back, and then you can remove the element. This one's just a little less convenient than the early models, which have big lugs and just push and pull in and out like that for cleaning. These actually stay in and they actually rotate up and you can clean underneath them. So you have a rotating up feature versus a completely removing feature. That's the kind of difference. But they're all oven elements so you can see the difference. The 30 inch oven has the largest heating element. There's kind of a difference. It's a few inches larger than the big oven 40 inch element. And of course here's the small oven 40 inch element. So biggest oven is in the 30 inch. There's a medium oven and a small oven in the large 40 inch dual oven. So that kind of clarifies the difference in size that people ask uh, which has got the largest oven. So we'll take a measurement. So this is a 30 inch lower element and it should measure about 23 ohms something plus or minus a few. So to measure this, this is just a ground. This is actually what we want to measure right here. We'll just put our clamp on this side. We'll get our reading here, and we end up with about 23.4, which is right on the money. This rules out anything being wrong with this oven element. When you have an oven element, it will just have zero reading. It'll have infinite resistance because it will have burnt somewhere and opened up the circuit in. There won't be a complete circuit, therefore you will have an infinite amount of resistance. Then you know your oven element is bad. If it re registers within the um, resistance reading that you'll get for each of your elements, you'll know your elements are good. So we'll set this one aside. We know that's a good element. 1966. These are grounding prongs. We don't measure here either. These are the two prongs that are just like the two prongs right here. So you can kind of see the difference. Grounding prong, these are the two prongs you measure. Grounding prongs, and these are the two prongs you measure. So we'll go ahead and measure this one and see what it is. This 40 inch, uh, 40 inch large oven element should be around 25 ohms on this particular one. Go ahead and get our meter here where everybody can see. And we get about 25 and a half ohms. 
So this is a this is a good oven element. There's no reason at all this should not work in your stove, assuming all your wiring is fine and your oven switch is fine uh, as well. Here's a small oven element, same thing. The snap-in, these are kind of a spring-loaded uh, grounding. And then here's the two oven element tabs we'll measure. This one should measure about 32, 35 ohms, something in the mid-30s here. And we're getting about 35 ohms. So we know this oven element is fine. So that's how you measure oven elements, the resistance of oven elements, the resistance of the burners and the resistance of the broiler elements. Once you can rule out your burners and your elements as being good, that tells you if you've got a problem, it's somewhere else in your oven. Burnt wire, broken wire, bad switch, um, etc. But nothing wrong with your elements or your burners.